debt and financial discipline yes and uh let me give a brief profile mm -hmm. of who we have in studio yes and remember right now we are live on facebook on youtube and on x mm -hmm. at hope fm live yes so you can share widely that link so that others can follow mm -hmm. One, Mr. Peter Mbava, yes, is a financial management and investments expert. Mm -hmm. Is an experienced IT professional. Mm -hmm. Is an astute business and finance uh, has an astute business and finance acumen, mm -hmm. having worked in the banking industry in the last uh, twenty years. Wow. Is a trainer and coach of investment groups mm -hmm. or chamas, mm -hmm. church groups and individuals. Mm -hmm. He's an expert in setting up formal financial structures, goal planning, setting and implement implementation. Vile na endelea na Juliza, profile yangu tu ni David King presenter wa Hope FM. God's boy. God's boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm impressed. Expert yes. in working with groups to set up strategies on financial investments and wealth creation. Mm -hmm. Trainer and speaker on relationships and money, men and money, women and money, youth and money, mm -hmm. how to invest to protect your family and for the future and is an alumni and certified student of Centonomy Limited leading financial management training institution. Hey. We love that. Siku moja profile yangu itasomwa hivyo. Amen, amen. David King. Your God's dreams boy, are valid. Hope media. <laughs> you know, anointed. <laughs> Wait, unajua hizo zake ni watu wamempea. Huyu anyway, let's not go there. Huyu <laughs> amejipea mingi sana. Let's uh, welcome our guest for today. Possibly I'll just give you a moment to I know there are certain things that are not on your profile. That's true. Uh, kindly just uh, say hi to the audience and tell us who you are, your name, family. <laughs> Yes. Thank you very much and uh good morning uh listeners uh, of uh, Hope FM. Glad to meet you David King and Shiko and thank you for hosting me today. Yes. I'm very happy every time Hope FM calls me mm -hmm. to just come share a little wisdom, actually more of uh my experience what I've gone through. I love telling my story. Mm -hmm. Uh hoping it will impact our listeners. So briefly, and thank you for that awesome introduction, David King. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm asked who I am, I say I'm a solution provider mm -hmm. uh, because I quickly identify needs and provide answers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm a husband, mm -hmm. a, a father, a brother, a friend, and a faithful steward in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I'm married to one lovely wife, uh, Grace, and we are blessed with three children, mm -hmm. uh, two girls and one boy. Joy is 22, Phil 14. Mm -hmm. Noel 8. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of training, my first training was a as a teacher, a trainer, a facilitator, something I did, and I thank God for that because it brought structure and order in my life. Mm -hmm. And I later transformed to be an IT professional, so that's what I do 8 to 5 today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I work for God in the best leading bank in this country and the region. Mm -hmm. And uh, to sum it all, I'll just say I'm God's vessel. And I pray that today's uh, show will impact our listeners positively. Yes. And that will give them hope. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, sir, for being here. I think mm -hmm. to start us off, before we get to financial disciplines and other, you know, very serious financial mm -hmm. jargon, mm -hmm. is, it, is it possible to survive in this life without debt? Yes, it is. And there are people out there who are surviving without debt. Mm -hmm. And uh, David, as we start today's show, I think it's important for us to clarify this. Mm -hmm. Debt is not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call good debt and mm -hmm. we have what we call bad debt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think because of the pressures we've gone through, a lot of time debt has been given a negative connotation, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Because today, most of the wealthiest and uh, rich people mm -hmm. uh, internationally and even in Kenya grew their wealth through borrowing mm -hmm. because debt comes about from borrowing. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the key issue as we take up today's session is to ask ourselves, every time you borrow, what's the purpose? Uh -huh. Because that's what then eventually defines whether debt is good or bad. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's 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 a good point. Uh, much later on, we shall be asking about the good and bad debt. Mm -hmm. However, at, at this moment, we'll uh, allow you to take us through what financial discipline is all about. Possibly, you can start us off by just defining it. Yeah. 
what is financial <laughs> discipline because Shiko, I know did that... you just throw me under the bus <laughs> I was, I, I've just been asked to define financial discipline mm-hmm. and thanks a lot uh, when you invited me I took time to just do some little research mm-hmm. and so when when you look through uh, different definitions I chose the simplest I love making our sessions simple mm-hmm. Um, I guess that's what teaching taught me. And uh, I, would, I, would, I would say the simplest definition I've come across of financial discipline is the act of setting monetary goals. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's make it simple. Just yes. setting monetary goals mm-hmm. and then measuring yourself against how well you have achieved those goals. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right? Yeah. Now, I know when we talk about goals many times, uh, this word may be confusing, but why do we set goals and measure ourselves against those goals? Mm-hmm. It's so that then we can achieve something that we desire in our lives. Yeah. And actually, financial discipline is what then grows into what we call financial independence. Mm-hmm. And that's where many of us desire to be. Mm-hmm. So we can't talk about financial independence without talking about financial, financial discipline. discipline. Yes. Yeah, right? So I would, I would want to keep it that simple for our listeners and uh, those who are engaging us today. It's basically just the act of setting specific money goals mm-hmm. and measuring. Because you can set goals and they end there. New yeah. Year resolutions. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and many times I even encourage those of us and mm-hmm. those who are in the corporate space, those in the business, we are very quick and active to set goals for mm-hmm. the businesses. But do we really give it the same importance when it comes to personal monetary goals? Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, no one should talk about financial independence without first starting off with having some sense of financial discipline. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, Financial discipline uh, gives birth to financial independence. And Mm -hmm. so it's important, and I'm glad you've chosen for us to have that discussion today. Hopefully, as we go on through the discussions, we look at uh, what are some of the simple steps you can take to to, to achieve financial discipline Mm -hmm. without necessarily losing focus on our main discussion today, which is debt management. And actually, debt management is Mm -hmm. one of the key steps Mm -hmm. to achieving financial discipline. Wow. Thank you, sir. Last week when we had the conversation, and uh, while we were winding up the conversation, we saw it prudent to have an expert here. Many, many, many people uh, called in or uh, wrote saying that they are very, like, very far deep in debt that they don't see a possibility of ever getting out. Is there a possibility for someone? Someone called, someone wrote in and said that he was a millionaire. And right now he has gotten to a place where they have to, to divide egg, some piece of egg or something with the sun. Is there a possibility for such a person to actually be restored back? And also another aspect that came through was COVID. I think we can't go a long way without uh, bringing up COVID because a lot of people lost jobs, people lost businesses. Actually, most of these people are in debt because Mm -hmm. of what they've not been able to recover since 2020. So even as you answer that question, Mm -hmm. I, I would ask if you can kindly help people um, you know, just know how to arise again. Yeah. Okay. Um, good question, uh, David and uh, Shiko. So the answer to your question, David, is yes. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how deep you are in debt. There is always uh, the, 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 the possibility and it is actually possible to, to, to arise again mm-hmm. and to get back to where you are. Many times I tell the people that I talk to as I talk about financial management and discipline, it's 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 first a mental thing. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's 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 what you believe in your mind. As that, a man thinketh. Yes, so as a man thinketh, so is he. You're mm-hmm. right, Shiko. Mm. So it doesn't matter how far you've gotten into debt. I think the most important thing, first and foremost, is to accept where you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you accept you're in debt, then you agree within yourself, I need to get myself out of this situation. Mm -hmm. Because debt is not any different from any other challenge and struggle we have in life. Mm -hmm. We have sportsmen who get injured. We have sportsmen who completely have their limbs and they need their limbs to participate in the sport uh, 
damaged yeah. but they work around and get back to mm-hmm. who they were you may not necessarily be as good as you are but we've seen many sportsmen get back uh, mm-hmm. and they continue being successful um what are the examples simple example would i give any other challenge in life and you'll agree with me when you look at all the challenges and the people you know in your lives who had challenges and were able to come up it first started with the mindset mm-hmm. yeah. and so many times even when i'm speaking to my audiences about money mm-hmm. what i tend to focus on more is the mindset because once you win that victory in your mind then doing it in the physical becomes easier mm-hmm. and so more specific to the question you asked david yes it doesn't matter how deep you are so first of all accept yes i'm in debt yeah and i'm deep in it so what steps then do i need to take mm-hmm. to reverse this and to get back to where i was so mm-hmm. it is possible and i will try as much as i can as we continue the discussion to just give ways how you can do this or examples and back to you shiko you are right uh the covid season had an impact in many people's lives and not just in kenya but globally yeah mm-hmm. as i sit here i can give you practical examples of members in my very own family very close and mm-hmm. friends that i know who lost their jobs some mm-hmm. of them never recovered and i'm not even talking about recovering job wise but even recovering in the mindset mm-hmm. there are people just because of the pain and the stress they went through because of losing jobs losing property having to offset assets have never gotten themselves to a level where they can arise yeah. mm-hmm. and this morning i hope all the listeners that are listening to us will will take courage in knowing that there are those who also went through the same and over time they've managed to accept their situation mm-hmm. they've sought help from financial uh, experts or counselors mm-hmm. and they've been able to slowly uh, get back on their feet have we all who suffered at that season gotten back to where we are maybe mm-hmm. not but we i know as i say the examples i know of people who lost almost everything but now they are on their way back uh, on track mm-hmm. so it is possible and uh, one thing i keep saying is uh, do not focus so much on how deep or down you've fallen mm-hmm. i think the focus should be on what do i need mm-hmm. to get to the next level in terms of improving yeah and one step at a time wow don't put pressure on yourself mm-hmm. one step at a time and slowly you'll find yourself getting back to where you are or even doing better, better. than you are doing pre covid mm-hmm. so there is hope listeners and there are ways and proven ways mm-hmm. that we can follow to get us there i was just wondering you know you've mentioned the financial discipline and there's someone who's saying you've talked about goals mm-hmm. yeah so what are some of the things uh, steps or things that someone can do because there's someone who is saying okay so what goal and i think you have already mentioned one of them being noting you the debts that you have and uh, a way to you know uh write them off or you know pay them off yeah that's that's one of the goals i think mm-hmm. you mentioned it but what are some of the other things that somebody can do to acquire financial discipline good question shiko and uh, even before we go into the steps we can take or what we can do i think mm-hmm. i just want again to start by saying mm-hmm. many times we are quick to give people five key steps mm-hmm. three major ways mm-hmm. yeah. to financial discipline mm-hmm. and yet there's that list now is saying i'm not even there can mm-hmm. you fast fill me because mm-hmm. i'm sinking swimming deep in that and i just mm-hmm. want to start by encouraging those who may be going through a lot mm-hmm. i personally have gone through a very difficult time from that covid period as you're saying mm-hmm. and i know it wasn't easy i mm-hmm. thank god I did not lose my job but mm-hmm. of course many of us also suffered because those who are close to us mm-hmm. were affected by this uh, particular pandemic yeah mm-hmm. and we found ourselves having to take care of more needs yeah. oh, than yeah. we did before mm-hmm. and this morning I just want to encourage that man that lady mm-hmm. that listener who is probably feeling I've reached the end because mm-hmm. not because you are not financially disciplined but because you've been stretched because of needs of others besides yourself or your immediate family and just yeah. to say i believe god sees what we go through mm-hmm. and every willing heart to assist god mm-hmm. always comes through yeah so having said that because 
I want to be real to the fact that there are people out there who probably are not necessarily even interested in knowing seven mm. step or three steps to financial. They're just asking what next step. So I'm saying hang in there. Mm -hmm. And maybe as we talk now through the steps, you could see how you can plug in. So as I said, and I'll, I'll give few steps. I don't like giving many things. So I'd want next time I ask, I meet David, I ask him, do you remember the three things we talked about? So yeah. I'm not big with seven steps, mm -hmm. 10 big steps. Yeah. So first and foremost, as you said, Shiko, it mm -hmm. starts with setting clear goals. Why do we yes. set goals? If you have no goals, then you have no purpose. Mm -hmm. All right. If you don't set yourself targets, then you have nothing to work towards. Yes. Yeah. And I know many of us probably don't like that word targets or goals because in the past we've set them and we failed to meet them. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't change the importance and the criticality of having goals. Yes. And I won't dwell much on that. All I'll say is, as you set your goals for the year, for mm -hmm. the month, for mm -hmm. the quarter, be realistic. Yeah. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. um, if what I earn or if what my income, uh, what, what I make as an income can only afford me to buy a parcel of land, maybe half an acre, then yeah. it would be wrong for me to set a goal that I want to buy a thousand acres by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So let's be realistic. Set goals that are aligned to um, your sources of income. And we know how much generally we make, whether you're employed or you're in business. Once you set the goals, as I said, it's not about setting the goals. Make sure then you come up with ways of reviewing Mm -hmm. those goals mm -hmm. i encourage again my audience if you can do it even in a month on a monthly basis yeah mm -hmm. and it's not easy doing this alone so david if you're married yeah get your wife to uh probably be your accountability partner mm -hmm. or if you have a, a friend it doesn't have to be your spouse mm -hmm. who can look at you in the eye and tell you you set this goal like in Villa yeah mm -hmm. In the month of March, so mm -hmm. you need somebody accountable who you trust mm -hmm. and who also believes in you mm -hmm. to walk this journey with you. And that's why I said many people set goals and targets, but we all, many, I take back my words, many of us fall back before the year ends because most of the goals we set or targets are for one year. But as you mature in this, then you can make it bigger. We'll have longer. to take a pause. You know, we have to pause because <laughs> of the you, news. Shiko. One mind in Bogwa coming to tell us some of the stories making headlines. When we come back, he's just mali to make a pause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you have any question, be sure to send them on 0717400555. And of course, he will gladly answer them. And uh, I like the fact that he encouraged people. So at the tail end of the next hour, He's also going to pray with us. Let's go for a short break. We'll be back in a short while. Hope FM. It's now 12 p.m. Listen and live.
Uh, we have a guest with us, and today he's telling us some things that uh, we some amazing things, uh, very amazing things, and we need to listen. We, we need, need to. to listen yeah. because if we don't listen, we are the ones to touch our mashakani. Yeah, now we have the opportunity to listen. Yes, and mm. God sent someone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before Again. we continue the conversation. Yes. Kuna mtu ameniambia, Devi, my cousin has a birthday today. Watu wa 29th wako. Ni wengi. Nikuwa nimesema sijui hata mmoja. Mwambia ya celebrity gi 28. Happy birthday to your cousin. But on a year like this, anamee katakuena. Yeah. Happy birthday to your cousin. Yes. All right. Mr. Peter Mbatha, who is a financial expert, is here with us taking us through financial discipline and debt management. Yes. Remember, we are live on Facebook, on YouTube, on X at Hope FM Live. Kindly share widely. If you have any question to our guest, you can send it on WhatsApp 0717-400-555 or on our text line 20933. Better yet, on the comment section, especially on Facebook, Enda pale, I can see Linda Juma getting you loud and clear. Moses Kingsley, Nyirenda, I'm taking notes. Muluka Alex, anasema I opener. Sarah Kamau, following from Tigoni. Linda Juma, anasema steps through financial discipline. Number one, setting clear goals or targets. It's important for us to get those notes and to also, like our guest Peter has said, to siandike tu mahali alafu tuyate kwa kitabu until December. Yeah. To have an accountability partner, that's what you told us. Yeah. So over to you, sir. Thank you. And uh, great to be discussing this. Uh, so just going back or recapping just what we said, because I think we had started looking at what are some of the steps you can take to achieve in financial discipline. And we said the first one is set yourself clear goals. Mm -hmm. And goals normally tend to be achieved over time. So, mm -hmm. and I'll give examples. Uh, I may have a goal to have a home maybe mm -hmm. in the next five years. So goals are not necessarily just one year or two years. So it depends on what your goal is. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I said we need to be realistic when setting goals is because the goal helps you determine the time. Mm -hmm. So somebody who has a goal of owning their own home may not be able to accomplish this as someone who probably wants to get married by the end of the year mm -hmm. because the financial commitments and requirements may not be the same. So yeah. I was just recapping, as you set goals, mm -hmm. be realistic. Some goals will take more time. Some goals can be achieved within a short time. Mm -hmm. Now, because goals take time, it is important then as the next step to break them down to shorter plans, which could be like a monthly plan. What do I do? For example, if I want to own my own, home in five years, Yeah. what do I do in the next three, four years so that by the fifth year I have a house, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If my goal is to be out of debt mm -hmm. by end of 2024, mm -hmm. again, you can't get yourself out of debt in a day. Yeah. So what are the small steps? And those small steps are what many times people will call setting up a budget and that's what i would call it as a second step i'll try to be as simple as possible mm -hmm. and what a budget helps you do uh, in terms of monetary terms is to break down that big goal mm -hmm. into small chunks yeah. they say you can't eat the elephant with one bite yes. you have to break it cut it down to chunks so those chunks is what basically call budget so that then you can start as i said earlier one step at a time you take one step this month and another step next month, another step next month. By the time we get to June, which is half year, hopefully you are closer to the goal. Yeah. All right. So again, I'll try not make this as theoretical as many times it will tend to be in class, but have a, at least a monthly plan. Mm -hmm. And going back to what Shiko was saying, Every end of the month, sit down with your accountability partner if you're blessed to have one. And as I say, this could be a spouse or just a friend you have. Mm -hmm. And look at how we're doing. Review it. Mm -hmm. That review is what will encourage you because, for example, if you are the target to save, let me make this very simple, 120000 by December. Mm -hmm. How do you break it down per month? 10k per month isn't mm -hmm. it there yeah. 12 months yeah so if you have this person who keeps checking and confirming you're putting aside 10k every month by june you have 60k you are more encouraged than you are in january mm -hmm. yeah. because you are clearly seeing the goal closer mm. and you are seeing 
the possibility of achieving it. By the time you are doing the reviews end of September, you are at 90K. That encourages you a lot because now you know I have only three more months. I've done it over nine months. Mm. So I can actually achieve it. And that's the power of a budget mm -hmm. because it helps you achieve the smaller plans that help you achieve the bigger goal that you set. Yes. Yeah. The other beauty of uh, a budget is it helps us then see clearer. Mm -hmm. If in a month I earn 50K, how much then can I put aside? Mm -hmm. Because what a budget will do, it will give you a list of what you need to spend on mm -hmm. and what then can you put aside. Remember, yeah. you cannot save if you can't eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because how do you save? Who will be there to enjoy the savings? So, yeah. mm -hmm. And I like being practical. So again, why I'm insisting on the monthly plan or the monthly budget is it's the one that will help you know what you can put aside after you've taken care of your critical monthly needs. Mm -hmm. And I just want to take a pause there and say, one of the things we really have to teach ourselves to do is to cut down on our spending. Mm. I was just talking to David and Chico as we were taking a break and I was telling him, and especially for us men, the gender, yeah. uh, we have a lot of pressure to please the crowd, to please family, to please people out there. And so you find you have these very critical needs, but you don't want to change your lifestyle. Yeah. Okay, going back to the story you are talking about COVID. Mm -hmm. If I was living in, uh, what example do I give? Kileleshwa maybe. Yeah. And I've lost my job. What would be the harm of moving? Maybe I was living in a two-bedroom, three-bedroom house. What would be the harm of moving to Pangani, for example? And I'm not trying to compare different locations mm -hmm. or any other place in Nairobi mm -hmm. where the rent may be half or a third of what I was originally paying. Mm -hmm. You will still find sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. You yeah. will still, food will still taste the same. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us to adjust even as we are looking and reviewing our monthly budgets to ask ourselves if I can't create additional income, because mm -hmm. many times I think we are pressured with look for an extra source of income. Mm -hmm. And maybe you are working eight to six. By six, you are too tired. You may not yeah. necessarily uh, have the time. And maybe you are a parent. After that, you are going, the next job is uh, taking <laughs> care of your kids. And here yeah. is somebody pushing and telling you, you need to look for an extra source of income. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering where, mm -hmm. where is the time? So again, we say there are two ways of adjusting monetary goals. You can either increase income or look for ways of cutting down on costs. Because if you're able to cut down on costs, then you are able to create that additional income. Mm -hmm. All right. So once you've done that, then uh, if you do that continuously and it becomes a discipline, i.e. you attain the financial discipline, mm -hmm. then we can move to the next step. Mm -hmm. to ask ourselves then how do we manage debt yeah. and after mm -hmm. we've managed debt then how do i get into saving and investing mm -hmm. so that i can prosper towards that goal of financial independence yeah and so that's why mm -hmm. i wanted to start by just breaking it first we have to win this battle mm -hmm. <laughs> in a, on a monthly basis before we start looking at it from a half year point of view and then annually and then five years to come yeah uh, you said something that is very key. Like somebody could be listening to us right now. You have, in not so many words, you've told us you don't have to wait for like what happened during COVID. Someone can take a look at their life right now That's true. and say, I want to own land mm -hmm. in three years. Yes. But if I continue living the way yeah. I'm living, I will not be able to attain that. So mm -hmm. I can move houses to a smaller house. I can uh, find alternative means of going to work to bring down. So you're telling us, in other words, even for us to be able to save, we can adjust. That is true, Shiko. Mm. Uh, we can actually end the show here. You're already converted. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm talking about. And mm -hmm. we should not feel the pressure to try and please anyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think what you've said is very important. Look at yourself in the mirror and mm -hmm. ask yourself, can I achieve these goals I'm setting if I continue living the, the way, way I'm, I'm living? living? Mm -hmm. More often than not, the answer will be no. Mm -hmm. And so the next question is, what adjustment do I make? Mm -hmm. And so if you have, like you've said, moved to a smaller house, mm -hmm. if you have to change the way you 
move from one place to another. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may own a car, but maybe where you stay, there's a train station near, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's maybe a third the amount of fuel you use. Mm -hmm. You will still get to work. Nobody ever asks, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, So those adjustments are very mm -hmm. critical. And with wow. those adjustments, we have to be very critical, I mean, very intentional to make sure also what we save doesn't go to other spending. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. So again, let's be careful because you find many times we adjust, mm -hmm. but what then we have saved, the additional quote-unquote income mm -hmm. we have av available, and that's again where budgeting comes in because then I'll be able to say, if I use the train instead of using the car because fuel is expensive, I'll save 10000 in a month. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are you doing with that 10000 because mm -hmm. that 10,000 should be deliberately set aside to help you achieve that big goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Yeah. And that's why these reviews are important on wow. a monthly basis. So mm -hmm. I've set these decisions. I've decided to adjust my lifestyle this way. What mm -hmm. I have saved, where is it going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if we forget everything else, we will say mm -hmm. in financial discipline and management and independence, mm -hmm. the, the, the ultimate goal is to get you. Mm -hmm. to be the one who controls where your money goes. Wow. Uh -huh. Today, many of us have no control over where our money goes. Why? Because when that salo comes, mm -hmm. Timbuktu. Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So because you are just looking at the steps, so I've just helped us see how we can set financial goals and how we can review this on a monthly basis. The next mm -hmm. bit is to work on your debt. Yeah. Those of us who have debt, mm -hmm. you have to be very deliberate. Before we start talking about saving and investing, you need to take care of your debts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And debts are temporary. I keep telling people that unless you keep digging. So if you get to a level where you decide, I don't want to be in debt anymore. Mm -hmm. you can actually achieve that. The yes. challenge we have today, and I had a friend talk about it, was a syndrome we are calling the borrowing blunder. So you find simply because there is a loan facility available either on mobile or in a bank or with a microfinance, even when you don't know what you need the money for, you go and borrow simply because it's available. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that's why today I want to encourage our audience and listeners, before you borrow, mm -hmm. always ask yourself, why am I borrowing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't borrow because you can afford to borrow. So let's mm -hmm. make it practical. If yes. today I earn 100,000 or I earn 50,000 shillings, and already when I draw my budget, the 50,000 or the 100,000 is expended fully, mm -hmm. why are you borrowing? Where will you get that additional income to take care of that debt? Yeah. So if you don't know where the repayments will come from, then don't borrow. Mm -hmm. wow. And nobody has ever been killed for not borrowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. But many times you find we borrow just because we can afford to borrow. Then the month end comes and the deductions come through, then you realize I've run out of all the money. Mm. Now, this was not an accident. It's simply because before you borrowed, you did not ask yourself why. Yeah. And so even at the beginning, you remember, David and Shiko, I told you, debt can be good or bad. Mm. Mm -hmm. So debt is good if you borrow and you know how you are going to finance it, the repayments. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yes. There are people who take a mortgage to own a home because they cannot afford, they, they may not have the time and the expertise to build one. Mm -hmm. But they know in their salary or in their monthly income from business, there is this 50K that I can put aside yeah. mm -hmm. to be able to repair this loan, to repair this mortgage. All right. There's somebody who is in business and uh, probably has this mobile application that the mobile lending yeah. and they know I can afford to borrow a hundred K without going to any bank because today again, mobile lending has opened up mm. um, the, the, the sources of uh, income. But the big question is what are you borrowing these funds to do? Mm -hmm. And even after you borrow, How? do you have room yes. to finance the repayments? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the, Answer to those questions is yes, I know I'm borrowing this to develop, mm -hmm. to build myself, to get an asset. For business. Then it's okay. Mm -hmm. And you are clear, you have this set amount that is required every month as a repayment. Then that's a good debt. Yeah. All right. But if you're borrowing for consumption, 
if you are borrowing for fun <laughs> and to make it worse, you don't have that additional income to repay yeah then then don't do it mm. but again we are saying to komali to koleos mm. so and there are those who've already made that mistake and they're already in debt so yes. what do we do again we go back to what i said look for ways first and foremost to cut down on your daily spending monthly spending and that extra income you're getting because of that adjustment you've made start paying your debt aha uh -huh. we go back to the adjustment factor Mm, adjustment is a good thing. All right. Yeah. So you have to learn and be deliberate about adjusting your spending. Mm -hmm. And in case you borrowed a loan at a time when you could afford to repay mm. and something happened in between, let's mm -hmm. say you took a mortgage and you're employed, but you lost your job, then mm -hmm. what do we do? Uh, I have the advantage of being in the financial sector for a good period of time, 20 years plus. Mm -hmm. And what I tell my audience again and the people i talk to is always go back to the person who lend you and tell them this is the situation i find myself in mm -hmm. how can we rework this and today many banks many financial institutions can actually rework the repayment as long as you're honest oh uh, the problem is that many people don't problem go. is uh. i lose my source of income i lose my job and you start disappearing not picking <laughs> calls yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to encourage those who may find themselves in this situation, go mm. back to the person who lend you yeah. and be open and candid with them and tell them this is the situation. How mm. can we rework it? Mm -hmm. And that even applies in cases where David borrows Peter mm. or Peter borrows Shiko. Usiombe mm. Shiko 100k alafu, unapotea, yeah. unabadilisha number. I think, uh, and that's why I was saying earlier, Dave, it doesn't matter how deep you are in mm -hmm. debt, you can still get out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's in the mindset. But let's mm -hmm. be positive and let's take responsibility. Kama umeomba deni, income imekatika, look for ways, go back to the person who lend you and agree. Even if it means this person giving you more time until you get yourself into mm -hmm. Yeah. a good space but do not disappear do not disconnect calls mm -hmm. <laughs> on that note so we are going to take a short break when you come back we're going to be looking at some of the questions that are coming in this yeah. is an amazing amazing session yeah i know there are many of us even as uh uh, Peter here is telling us to adjust Mungu and Asem, I have been telling you. <laughs> yeah. When we come back, I think uh, Mr. Peter, you could start us, start us off with this question from Lydia. Mm -hmm. And Asem, I'm taking notes. I have a problem of reaching my target. Nikianza kusave, kuna emergency huwa ina come in, then najikuta natoa pa saving zangu. Then najikuta pesa na pata three quarters zinaenda kwa unknown things paka najikuta na shangaa pesa zimeenda wapi hata nikijaribu ku break down my salary bado tu najikuta narudi kwa my savings how will you help me about that shall be starting off with that one good question back. good question all right give us uh, some few minutes we'll be back in a few OPFM, another quality service from christ is the answer ministry the
even you yes. even the house that you will have mm -hmm. but uh, i like what he, uh, peter is telling us today mr peter that even if god is going to give you a house in five years he has given you a mind and he expects That's you to it. plan yeah. True, yeah. That, true that i eat a talker too we usually dream Sijui grandfather hauko unajua alikuatia inheritance hauko jua alafu ikapatikana no we have to plan asante sana uh, mr peter thank you mr peter we are yes. live on facebook on youtube and on x at hope fm live and uh, right this moment we have like uh, 22 minutes to go mm -hmm. therefore you can send in your questions on whatsapp 0717400555 or on the on the comment section kama wana linda lydia rather vile amefanya mm. lydia who was talking about you know emergencies that mm. uh you know force her to dig into her savings mm. basically that is what she was asking you can send in your question pia on the comment section and uh, mr peter will be handling them karibu sana once again mr peter asante sana so we I'll, I'll use lydia's question to transition us to the next bit remember i was very intentional to say as part of the steps to achieving financial discipline start by setting realistic goals then mm -hmm. create your budget which will help you break the big animal into small chunks that mm -hmm. you can achieve as you continuously and intentionally review yes and i propose on a monthly basis how you are doing against your set goals and then we talked about debt management and we say debt management starts even before you start thinking of how you'll repay by just adjusting your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once we adjust, we say that excess amount you're able to save because you've adjusted, use it to clear your debt. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not even talking about saving and investment because how do you save and invest? Yeah, All right? yeah, yeah. And I like Lydia's question. And uh, Lydia, this takes us to the next bit. So if you've been able to at least get your debt to a manageable level, because you don't also have to clear your debts completely to start saving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you get your debts to a manageable level, then if you have additional income, then it's also advisable to start doing the prudent things. One of them being setting aside an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. I know many times we say, I was caught by surprise. But I keep telling, um, again, my audience and the people I speak to, there are very few emergencies in life. I know things like sickness, illness are true emergencies because they're not planned for. Mm -hmm. But even those, we have mechanisms of uh, mitigating against or planning for such eventualities. Some of these ways being, if it is sickness, we can take medical insurance. And I did not talk about medical insurance before talking about clearing your debt. Lazimo Malize then into one to move to the next phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take medical insurance. That then will take care of things uh, on a rainy day when mm -hmm. this other person or party who depends on you gets sick. When it comes to matters emergency, set aside an emergency fund. I know we've had this sometimes, but emergency funds really help it's not easy setting up an emergency fund but it's doable mm -hmm. and again setting up an emergency fund can be a goal mm -hmm. i can decide i want to have an emergency kitty worth 300k in the next three years mm -hmm. yeah. david is that achievable yes. yes yes it is achievable so then there is your goal and you start working backwards mm. how much do i set aside the first year is it 100k is it another 100k the second year and the third year and by the third year you love and of course the reality is that as you're working towards setting up this emergency fund the emergencies that will come yeah, mm. yeah. and uh she was asking me where does faith come in this is where faith comes in mm. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a combination of faith and works mm -hmm. yeah. as we pray god protects us and heals us and shields us from these uh, these uh, sicknesses and illnesses but we're also saying we also need to be deliberate to set aside this amount of money so mm -hmm. that we can build this emergency kitty mm -hmm. and the emergency kitty is not something you do just once and it ends as you continue building you continue growing it and as you pull out to take care of emergencies you continue working on it but i think i wanted to break it down to lydia and say lydia mm -hmm. you can set yourself a goal yeah. to come up with an emergency fund mm -hmm. whether you want to do it in one year or three years and it's for you to determine what that amount is mm. and then now work backwards what do i need to set aside per month 
And with time, you'll find that becomes a habit, and then that helps you take care of emergencies as they arise. All right. Mr. Peter, yes. I wanted to ask you, maybe in a few minutes you can help us, because we have uh, seen a lot of these. There's the 50, 30, 20, you know, mm. budgeting. There's a 30, uh, there's a 10, 30, is it 30, 30, 30? Uh, kindly help uh, the listener understand when it comes to budgeting, which one of them is effective <laughs> or <laughs> yeah That's or true. which one can you adapt because you know um uh please just help us <laughs> so i would say there's really no standard measure or rule that you can say is forced on anyone at mm -hmm. the end of the day you as an individual can come up with a given guide Mm -hmm. that will help you achieve your financial goals. Okay. But the 50-30-20 rule becomes very famous and popular and mm -hmm. is spoken about more than any other mm -hmm. because it has been proven to work. Mm -hmm. And for the listeners who may be wondering what we are talking about, mm -hmm. this is a rule that basically says out of your total income, mm -hmm. let's assume you earn 100,000, mm -hmm. you should dedicate 50% to the most basic needs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your housing school fees if you pay school fees for your children the things that you cannot do without mm -hmm. that must be sorted by money mm -hmm. and then put 30 percent of that total income into savings and investments mm -hmm. because this is what will take care of your future yes and then the last 20 percent is then dedicated to what we call ones mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. again they say do not work so hard and so much mm -hmm. and there is nothing to show for it you should also enjoy the life we are living mm -hmm. yeah and so that is where the 50 30 20 rule comes mm -hmm. from and you see that again is just a way of breaking up something that's very big into a simple three chunks that help you control mm -hmm. where your money goes going. we've mm -hmm. said that's our that's goal today goal. by the end yeah. of today we want to be in control mm -hmm. of where our money goes yeah mm -hmm. so 50 percent can be dedicated to the basic needs which you can't do without mm -hmm. 30 percent goes into savings and investments and then 20 percent then can take care of your ones once in a while shiko you need to take your kids to the mall and to the yes. park and mm -hmm. for that end of year holiday Yes. Because we also work and we reward ourselves at the end of it. And so wow. kwambia mwili pole. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the 50 30 20 rule comes from. Yes. Okay. Thank you Mr. Peter. Uh, someone on WhatsApp and asema hi my name is Joyce. Mnani motivate sana. I'm uh, I'm that person who spends most after getting my salary, but I've been desiring to save a lot nimeshindwa. I earn 28k a month. Kindly advise me on how to save with that amount. Mm -hmm. I think at this point it would be easy to say go 50, 30, 20, right? <laughs> 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 but uh, what I'd like to tell us, listen, and thank you for the question. Again, I think we need to be deliberate to make sure we take care of our most important basic needs that we can do about mm -hmm. without. Mm -hmm. But it does not matter how much you earn. Whether you earn a thousand bob, mm -hmm or you earn 10,000, or you earn 100,000, or even half a million. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you should be able to divide that money in mm -hmm. such a manner that you get to save something. And mm -hmm. remember we said, you start with the basic needs, you take care of your debts, then we can discuss saving and investment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let me just simplify this whole saving and investment uh, a business because sometimes it becomes confusing yeah mm -hmm. and as a teacher again i'll go back to my simple examples yeah saving is basically just putting money aside mm -hmm. uh -huh. all right yes so that one day it gets to an amount that you can use to invest so let me use this example when you want to grow maize and beans what do you do you have to start by getting the seedling so that act of just taking 10 kilos of maize seeds mm -hmm. and five kilos of uh, bean seeds and just putting aside is what I would equate to seven. Mm -hmm. It does not multiply. It does. And even if it, it was to multiply, it's to a very small extent. Mm -hmm. Investment is what multiplies our income. Yeah. And so similarly, what happens when you take those 10 bags of maize and you put them in the soil? 
they grow and they multiply. And out of the 10 uh, simple two kilogram bugs, you can actually end up coming up with several bugs of maize. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that simple act demonstrates the difference between saving and investing. Mm-hmm. So investing, so if you are if you have a goal to invest after you've taken care of your debt money uh, issues and yeah. all that, then it's important you be deliberate to put aside some money, which mm-hmm. is what we are calling savings, so mm-hmm. that eventually when these monies get to a specific amount, mm-hmm. you can pull them out and put them in some investment vehicle. Mm. or asset so that it can multiply mm-hmm. your income. There's Thank someone you, who is asking, Devi, I may point out, Ukoni, all the way from Kericho, they're asking if insurance is an uh, investment. Good afternoon, Kericho. <laughs> sit down, <laughs> Kericho Assembly. Yes. <laughs> I will answer in this simple manner, and those in the insurance sector can correct me if I'm wrong. Insurance basically means protection. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Anytime you hear somebody talk about insurance, first and foremost, you're just saying protection. Why do you take medical insurance? Because mm-hmm. you want to protect yourself the day you get sick. Yeah. Why do you take a life insurance policy? So that mm-hmm. should anything happen and you pass on before or you mm-hmm. anticipated, there's something left for your family to take care of. Mm-hmm. Yes. Why do you take car insurance? So in that case in you case mean, your car yeah, gets yeah. into an accident. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't say insurance is investment, although mm-hmm. I know today insurance companies are coming up with investment uh, products. Mm-hmm. But primarily to answer that question, I would say insurance equals protection. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Thank you, sir. Lynn from Mombasa tuned in and I say, I'm really trying to manage a business. Mm-hmm. Started with a very small capital and it's really hard trying to improve it because of many costs. I ca- can't divide into stock taking, rent payment, and renovating it. Can I still manage to make it big with a small amount I started with? It's been almost an year now and no big improvement. Interesting question. She's been very practical. And I like such questions because that's day-to-day living. Mm-hmm. And just listening to that question, it reminds me, I keep encouraging the people I talk to about financial management, let's also be deliberate to go out and seek training. Uh It's training is very critical. Nobody knows it all. Mm. And just listening to that lady, and Mm. there are many schools out here that are doing uh, financial training on how to run your business effectively. And Mm -hmm. be careful, of course, as you look out, uh, make sure you get good recommendations. Mm. But I would say that would be my first uh, uh, guidance. Yeah, Get yourself into a space where you can engage with other business people who could probably be doing the same kind of uh, stuff you do. And if not possible, look out for uh, training institutions out here that are training um, business people on how to manage your businesses and do not fear, do not say training fees Nimingi San and Anya Talipa 5k kuenda mm. for one month uh, or two weeks of training. Yeah. Remember it's an investment. You have to get that knowledge. You want to acquire knowledge so that you can apply it in your business. So mm-hmm. I think that would be my answer to that. Today I'm not an expert in everything but a lot of the wisdom I have gained is by sitting mm-hmm at the feet of wise men who've yeah. done it yeah. and uh, many times I've had to pay for it mm-hmm. and so I would never say training is, a, is, a, is an expense, training is an investment so be be willing to, to, to sit with somebody who has done it and for those of you who are in businesses, if you can't afford to pay for that class or that training course look for somebody who is doing a business similar to what you do mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And engage them and find out how have they managed to do it. Mentorship, yeah? Yeah, Mm -hmm. yes. How have they managed? Because they will help you avoid many pitfalls because Mm -hmm. they've walked that journey. Mm -hmm. So that's another way I would uh, advise our good listener to go about that situation. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Peter. Remember, good people, we are live on Facebook, on YouTube, and on X at Hope FM Live. If you Mm -hmm. have a question to Mr. Peter right here. You can send them on WhatsApp 0717 or on our comment section that's on our Facebook at Hope FM Live and uh, we shall be sure to ask him. As, as we get to 
the very last few minutes uh, of the show, Mr. Peter. Mm -hmm. What would you advise someone who's uh, in a corporate setup and they are, let's say, a financial consultant? Um, they are the head, the, the head of finance. And they've gotten themselves to a position where they are told now you have to cook these numbers because we, we, we think this company is going under and we cannot manage our debt. What will you advise such a person? Mm. Oh, wow. That's a million dollar question. Are we <laughs> taking a break as I think through? <laughs> or do you, want to give it, do you want me to give it a shot right away? Yeah, we, we don't have another break. <laughs> All right, cool. So valid question and not just valid, but practical. Mm -hmm. I'm sure today if we reached out there, there is one or two people or more who would raise their hand and say, I've had to go through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think I just want to pick it up from, um, I listened to your morning show and I think uh, uh, Favoured Frank and uh, Sharon. Sharon were interviewing mm -hmm. uh, your ex-bishop who's the chairman of uh, ESCC. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a discussion just around the same and allow yes. me to borrow from the wise. And I remember mm -hmm. the bishop giving the example of Daniel. You remember mm -hmm. when Daniel, uh, and, and I'm borrowing an example from the Bible. Yes. During the times of uh, Daniel, he was actually working for government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Daniel suffered because of integrity. Yeah. Yes. And I'm answering your question. I'm just saying sometimes if you choose integrity, you may have to pay the price for it. Mm. But in the long run, it's worth it. Yeah. Wow. So because of being a man of integrity, he found himself in a den of in a, in a den of lions, right? Yes. yes. Mm. So the question you've asked, David, I would answer the same way. I would say choose to do what is right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I know we fear, what if I lose my job because I've not complied, I've not cooked the books. God mm. will take care of it. Yeah. I keep saying, and this is again where faith comes in, Shiko. Mm -hmm. Every time we take a break, Shiko asks me, where does faith come in the story <laughs> of money? <laughs> yeah. Choose to do the right thing. And yeah. I believe God rewards us for doing the right thing. Yes. God will not let you suffer unto death. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, like uh, I think uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, even if it means we die, yeah, mm -hmm. we yeah. shall do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So that would be my encouragement to that person. It's not an easy decision, but mm -hmm. it's the right thing to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. do not allow yourself to be compromised mm -hmm. to please man. Uh -huh. There is one who is the source of everything, and if we stand with integrity, he stands by our side. Wow. wow. I actually know of someone, I was asking for a friend who's uh, found himself in such a situation and they are a believer. Mm. And it's such a tough thing because they are telling him, if you don't do this, then you have to lose the job now. And mm. you can imagine thinking about your family and all. Thank you, sir. I think those uh, are the situations where heaven and hell are both looking to see what you will <laughs> what do. You do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Christine from Kawangware. He's saying, hi, great people. Thanks for the precious lesson. Please, may you repeat the spending formula? The 50-30. <laughs> I believe she is talking about the 50-30-20. So what you're basically saying, out of your total income, put aside 50% to take care of the basic needs, mm -hmm. rent, transport, food, yeah. school fees. Then put aside 30% as savings for your investments. That would take care of savings and investment and mm -hmm. the 20% then for your wants. And your wants, as I said, is the activities you undertake to reward yourself mm -hmm. for the hard work, whether mm -hmm. be it going out for a holiday, taking your family out for lunch when you can. Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, at this point, with like three minutes to go, mm -hmm. probably you could give us your final word. And like Shiko had requested, Make a prayer for many that are uh, wallowing in debt and mm. they are really wondering how God will come through for them. You know, I know you have a grace for finances. Ukiona mtu ame succeed for yeah. over 20 years in that, it's good to just uh, acknowledge. acknowledge. Yes, so please pray for the many and uh, yeah. that God will give them wisdom. <laughs> just like he has given you. So, just before that, the Sitam Kericho Assembly once again are asking, in the 50, 30, 20, where, where do, do you, you put, put the time? time? 
tight before comes before tight we talk comes 50 30 <laughs> 20 and, and let me just uh, in a very short moment say mm. many people have as, actually asked me and i and i mentioned this the last time i was here in hope mm. do you tight on your gross or do you tight on your net mm -hmm. and my simple mm -hmm. answer to that is do you want to gross God or do you want to net, net God? God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you tie it and what remains is what then you work with mm. uh, using the 50, 30, 20 rule. Uh -huh. I hope I've answered that. And do not, uh, I, I actually, I choose to gross God. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. I hope mm. I've answered the question. Yes, and uh, once again, uh, David King and she go to just say Asante Nisana. Asante. I'm humbled to have been here. Mm. And I hope what we've discussed has helped our listeners. And I hope we'll get to do this again. Yes. yes. And just before we pray, allow me to do a shout out to my number one fans, my kids, Joy, Phil, mm -hmm. and Noel. They're uh -huh. on midterm. Joy is working. Mm -hmm. And I know they are listening in just mm -hmm. to tell them they're the most beautiful kids in the whole wide world. Wow. Oh. <laughs> and uh, my good friends, their friends here who told me, if you don't mention my name, mm. you're in trouble. <laughs> so, Jemo Umejiskia, wherever you are. Yes. And mm -hmm. all the other friends who just encouraged me as I was coming. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. So, uh, God bless you guys. And as we go into praying, just as we conclude, once again, to encourage everybody listening, mm. debt is temporary. Mm. Mm. Trust God choose to adjust the way you are living and do the right things and you will get help all yeah. right mm -hmm. and there are many people out here we have training colleges we have financial management experts you can reach out to them i'll share my number at the end of this anyone who wants to reach out feel free to reach out but let's just take a minute to pray okay mm. almighty father in the name of jesus we want to thank you for the session we've had today uh top fm uh from 11 to this moment and we want to thank you, Lord, for the discussions we've had. Thank you for enabling us to share words of wisdom, um, actions we can take, practical steps we can take to help us live a financially disciplined life mm. uh, with the aim of getting to financial independence and being able to control where our money goes. And all, Lord, at the end of it, for your glory and honor. And so I'm praying for every listener this afternoon, Lord, you know us you know those who are going through challenges especially financial distress and i just pray through your grace and your power mm -hmm. that you may help us lord it all starts with you you are the source of everything lord and we love you and you know you love us so i pray for everybody who is listening those who are in different state those who are in financial distress those who are looking for ways to invest those who have more than enough and they're wondering how do i use these resources lord reach out to each and every one of us and just meet us at our points of need. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the lessons we've learned and how we pray that you may give us another opportunity to learn together. For we pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, so a much. quick one, my number is 0722-263-9242. I'll repeat that, 0722 263962. Feel free to reach out. If I don't pick, uh, send a text, I will get back to you. Otherwise, once again, David and Shiko, God bless you. God bless you. And too. thank you to the entire Hope Media. You are doing a great job. You are thank giving you, this nation hope mm. and keep working hard. All right. Mm -hmm. Asante Sana, it was a pleasure having you. Yeah. Uh, until tomorrow.